All right, guys. Um, good morning from Ghana. Once again, Professor here. Okay, so yesterday we started with a project. Uh, I said that I am having a program at uh, University of Energy and Natural Resources in Ghana. And um, as part of the, 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 the training is about Arduino, okay? And uh, supposed to teach how to program Arduino board. But then uh, to make things fun, I decided to develop uh, a development board for the Arduino so that we can use it as a means of learning how to create programs for Arduino. And uh, it also be a means of helping those who have been experienced how to develop systems with Arduino. Okay, so yeah, so far so good. Yesterday we did something, we got a point. Um, we updated it a little bit during the class and uh, I'll quickly go through for the sake of those who are watching online and are not part of the class. I'll quickly go through what we've done so far. Then uh, we can continue. I'm hoping I could uh, develop the PCB and uh, print it out and also uh, assemble the component and use it for class this evening. So um, let's see how it goes. It's going to be a very busy day, but yes, I'm, I'm hopeful this can I can pull out this. Yeah, so if, if you are watching online and um, <clears throat> you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. All right, so let's get started. So our work done so far, um, uh, so far, yeah, so I have cleaned those who were in class yesterday. I've cleaned, I've cleaned up the circuit a little bit, but I haven't actually done any matching. So, what I've done quickly is um, in heat card, you usually have to declare where your power sources are coming from, right? Because of them power flux. So, I have something to represent the battery source, and then the 12 volt source, and then uh, the 5 volt source, and then the ground. Okay, so this is something like power declarations. And then, uh, let, me, let me quickly do something real quick over here. Okay, great. So this is the I talked about. If you haven't watched this, check the previous video. Okay, uh, we, we talked about this is our uh, power input, which is a DC barrel, and uh, we introduced a switch on it. So when the power comes in, that is the bat. Okay, the the bat flag. Then after the switch, we we convert it, we change it to the twelve volt. Is that okay? So anything that we reference at 12 volt will come after the switch anything that we reference at that will come before the switch okay so uh, yeah and also instead of putting all the four volts on the 12 volt line i've split it and uh, move two of them all the four capacitors on the 12 volt line i have moved two to the 12 volt line and two to the five volt line okay we are actually not going to do much on the 12 volt line I will be doing so much on the high volt line, so I've split them two to each, and uh, I have also introduced uh, an LD, a linear voltage regulator to convert from 12 volt to 5 volt. Uh, technically, this is not efficient because uh, the this is a linear device, hence the efficiency will end up being small. In fact, uh, we may end up operating in something below 50, but this is just a development board and I don't want to stress on uh, all this kind of stuff, right? But this voltage is mainly because of the fact that I'm using, I'm going to use a GSM module, right? Uh, the GSM module technically should require about two amps sometimes when it spikes. But what I want to realize is usually, it is usually using around 250 milliamps. Okay, so most of the time this should work. So this is going to be the main power source for the GSM module. Yes, the Arduino already has its own onboard regulator. So I intend to use that one too. So the, the Arduino's onboard regulator coupled with this should be able to power up our system efficiently. And beside, our LEDs are not depending, we're going to depend on this 5 volt, we're going to depend on the 4 volt. So, yes, this should still work out. 
Okay, and I'm also gonna head to the segment, the segment to the main phase uh, in, order, in order. Uh, yesterday, we ended at the place where the all these places, if you check the previous videos, these lines were connected to crowd. Uh, during the evening session, the class, uh, the class period, and I said that we actually want to control these LEDs using Arduino, okay? And looking at the fact that our LEDs are powered by the turbo source, the Arduino, as we learn, and when it switches, the digital things can only produce 5 volts and 20 milliamps, right? But then, if you look at this, we need so if let's say we clear this away and connect it to uh, a fire boot so it wouldn't be able to power this LED modules up, uh, LEDs up because we need to go both Arduino can get us only five. We decide we need assuming we even decide to run 15 milliamps, 15, 15, 15, that'll be a total of 60 milliamps, right? And Arduino's DPIO uh, cannot do that. So we have to find a way of doing this so we use it that green so we introduce a transistor so what the transistor is helping us do with this uh the transistor has three terminals you have the collector the emitter and the beams right uh, what happens is that and before energy can flow from the collector to the emitter to close this circuit uh, we have to supply some current or energy at the base right so Looking at it, we can conveniently the base requirement is actually very low uh, for a typical BJT bipolar energy transistor like this. We only need a voltage of about 0 0.7, 0.8 volts here, and uh, a current to saturate it since we are using it for switching. We need a current of about 1 million. Okay, current of about 1 million. Now, if you want details on this, um, don't, don't worry, I, I'm working on the series on fundamentals of uh, electronics, uh, basic electronics from the first principle. So follow my my, um, my YouTube channel on uh, as Professor GH. I'll be dealing with transistors and give more details on that. But um, for this course, I can't actually do that. Again. So we need a current of um, 1 million of top 2 to flow here and the voltage of 1.5 right so this is something that Arduino can do for us so here this label here we will be linking it to an Arduino pin okay, which we know can be 5 volts to 120 milliamps so we are using this resistor to step down uh, to move the current from 220 milliamps to just uh, about 1 milliamp or so uh, something a little bit higher than one million, and then it will also end up uh, dropping or dissipating the energy and giving us only about 0 0.7 volts here, right? So it's the same thing I have done for the rest. Okay, so now instead of trying to switch this light directly using the Arduino piece, we are rather going to switch the base of the transistor like using the Arduino piece. Now, when the transistor switches, it's when we or when we apply energy to the base or current to the base, then this transistor is going to switch, and then current is going to flow from the collector to the emitter. That means that this LED will light up. Okay, so the same thing applies to all the others. Uh, so right now you can see that we have direction one LED, direction one red, direction one amber, direction one green. And over here we have direction. Uh, so this is supposed to be direction two, direction two, red, and uh, this direction two, amber, and finally direction three, uh, two, green. Okay. So now everything we, we have our load ready to be controlled by the Arduino. Okay. So the next thing that we did in class was to bring up the Arduino Uno R3 board, right? Now micro here, yeah, micro control. This is a symbol in Kika. So uh, we started before my, 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 my PC went to know that and even time was up. 
have. So yeah, let's continue. Okay. Initially, I did not want to use that Windows onboard release, but then I think I will have to use it. I uh, will have to use it. So let me just call this window. Okay, this window all that. Okay, so. Because I didn't intend to use the VA, but I'm going to use it now. And uh, the VA will take the 12 volt source. Okay. The VA is going to take the 12 volt source. And uh, I would rather not use Arduino. Uh, I, I don't take power from the Arduino 5 volt. Okay. Every 5 volt that is required is going to come from. Our high boot regulator is that okay? So I don't intend to use Arduino high boots as an output thing. Okay? So we will use the 12 volt or the beam to power Arduino up, and that's it. We are not going to pull energy from the Arduino. I don't want it uh, going or doing so much work else to end up heating up. Okay? Then I I I, I, ex I also explained that the Arduino has a reset button. And also a pin for that. Now, since uh, in use, uh, typical applications, you may end up packaging your your circuit, right? You won't get the opportunity to be opening your circuit to press that reset button. So, I do know that by using the reset pin, you can actually create your own button or interface your own button to do exactly that. And that's what we are doing over here. Okay, and. Um, this particular signal is you see the bar on top shows you that it is an active low signal that means that to activate it we need a low signal over there and the way we can implement that using a push button is doing this particular thing so we have five volts here and uh, we have ground here then we have a switch now if we take this away right so that we have something like this uh, the problem is that this would work okay but the moment we we press on this button, then it means that we are short circuiting this point. So although yes, it will end up sending a low signal to the pin, uh, this is not a good thing because we will be creating a short circuit. That's why we will drop in a very large resistor, which will limit the amount of current that will go through. Now, typically, I use 10 ohms, uh, 10k for this. Okay. I use 10k for this. So now when when you push instead of short circuiting, you have a 10k load, which will now reduce the amount of current that gets to drain. So you can actually calculate it. That would be five divided by 10k, right? Which is something around um, I think five milliamps or so. Okay. Oh yes, uh, one over two. Yes, so something like five milliamps. So you can you can check it out. Okay, so that's the reason. We are introducing this particular thing. Uh, from the look at things, I think I, I may have to adjust this a little bit. Probably put it like this. And let's clean this up. And uh, I'm going to call this RST, RST BTN, reset button. And then um, adjust this one to Okay, uh, because I will need the space they need for something. Okay, all right. So, so that is it. That is it. That's the first thing that we are we are doing. And now, remember, if you look here, you can see that we put labels on this. So we have D one R, D one A. Now these are points that have to be connected to the microcontroller. Okay, so. Uh, the microcontroller piece, yesterday we talked about their functions, what you can do with them, and uh, all that. I think I should have a video on this on the Tech Foundation channel. Okay, so if you are watching online, you weren't part of the class, please check my Tech Foundation channel. I have a video called Introduction to Arduino Using Mabel. Okay. In that video, I talk about the various pins on the Arduino once again. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. All right. So technically, what we should be doing is link a wire from here all the way up to this, right? So something like that. 
but usually this leads to a very messy schematic okay so instead of doing this we rather use labels so for instance if i want to connect this point to a pin on the arduino i'll just put the same label right on the arduino pin like i've done here and that automatically links them together okay so let's go ahead to connect the rest of the so now we connected the, the pin to the amber we'll do the same thing for the green okay so r red gold green right then we we'll do the same thing for direction two uh, because uh, of how we'll be doing the arrangement it is a good thing to keep these pins closer okay but as a matter of fact you can connect them on any pins that you want it doesn't really uh, matter but uh, it is good when you keep them together okay it's good when you keep them together okay so now we have connected everything on the traffic light uh, the, for the controls for the traffic light we've connected them okay we've connected them now in my in my during the lessons yesterday i said that yes the d0 and d1 pins can be used for digital equations but i advise not to use it if you intend to be programming your computer using the us uh, usb because one thing i've realized is that when you connect circuits any circuit to these pins your usb usually don't function well you may have to take your Arduino off your board or whatever you have embedded in to program and put it back, which is not really convenient. So for all the applications I build with Arduino, I never tamper with these two pins. I, I even think of them as they do not exist, right? That's so far as you will be programming your circuit using USB, then I advise not to do this. But if you don't intend to, then you can just use them. Probably if you are going to use the ICSP, something called the in circuit system program. Okay. All right. Now I've left this pin here for a purpose. We will come back to it. So technically, this is all that we need for the the traffic light, right? But take note. Uh, the purpose of this is not to learn how to build a traffic light. It is to design a development board that we can use to learn Arduino programming. Okay, so although we done with the, we are done with the traffic lights thing, I'm going to add other things that would would help us learn various concepts in Arduino programming. Okay, so I'm going to add other things. Now there is something called interrupt. For instance, as I'm like teaching right now, if I receive a phone call. I will, I will pause, attend to that phone call. When I'm done, then I continue from where I left. So it means that the phone call interrupted me. Is that okay? Now, the way the Arduino executes, executes its code is it starts from the top, run down to the bottom, and repeat it over and over and over. Okay. So there are times that you need Arduino to probably do something. Let's say, uh, you are monitoring a particular signal from a source and uh, you, uh, when something happens, let's say a, a threshold value is reached, you are probably monitoring temperature and uh, when the temperature is let's say 40 degrees Celsius, it is a critical temperature, you want something to be done immediately. In that case, you have to interrupt the Arduino's work. Okay, you have to interrupt the flow of the Arduino. So uh, the only pins that you can use for the interrupt on the Arduino Uno are digital pins two and three. Is that okay? So I'm going to set up an interrupt on the pin two so that we learn how to program interrupts too. Okay. Now to do that, I'm going to use a button. I'm going to use a button and uh, let's let's create that button somewhere here. Oh, okay. I think I could put it here. So we're going to create an interrupt, a button to simulate interrupt. Okay. All right. Uh, I can. So this this button configuration is called an active low configuration, right? That means by default it is high. By default, this the signal here will be high. If we press the button, it will go low. Is that okay? So for the interrupt, let's let's keep it like that. 
let's keep the interrupt like that and uh, move this one here so instead of i'll call this interrupt btn okay so we'll use it for interrupt okay and uh, once again we need to give it a label take note i said that there are special pins that can be used for interrupt and that would have to be pin 2 or pin 3 apart from these two pins you can't use any other pin for interrupt on the arduino uno okay so take note of that all right so by putting this label here and here it means that we've linked the two places together is that okay all right now arduino uno has six analog pins okay six analog pins labeled a0 up to a5 yesterday i explained the concept of analog pins and analog signals right uh if you don't know about it once again check my video introduction to arduino using Mabel. okay on tech foundation platform youtube for more details on that so we will, we will let's let's integrate the ability to do use the signal right now one thing that really comes to mind is uh, let's say we want to measure we want to be monitoring the level of our battery okay as we are using the system we want to be monitoring the level of our battery so what we can do is to uh, use the Arduino to measure or to be detecting or monitoring the level of the battery as we use the system so if in case the battery goes low we can prompt that hey the battery is low like your phones can tell you right now to do that it's simple since the battery would directly be connected to the 12 volt source we can pull it from there okay we can pull that from there so all we need to do is to create a potential divider application okay uh, sorry a potential divider now the signal that you can feed to any of these analog pins can be a minimum of zero and a maximum of five volts is that okay and this is a case where we want to measure a voltage that could be a five volt uh, a 12 that is a 12 volts uh, uh, 12 volts yeah in magnitude right so if we connect this directly to the pin like this we will destroy the arduino if we do this we will destroy the arduino is that okay so that is not something that we want to do okay so the only thing we can do is to create what we call a potential divider now to create a potential divider it's it's very simple you just need two resistors okay so let's let's copy this resistor and i'm going to put it here okay and i'll duplicate it and put it uh, the other one here right now whenever you have resistors in series like we have for this let me clean things up a little whenever you have resistors in series like we have for this okay uh potential gets divided so if i wire this thing up okay in a situation like this where in a situation like this where we have 10k 10k the potential at this point that's what we we are interested in is to feed this the potential at this point is going to be six volts because the the what do you call it? the resistors are the same okay so you can check on potential division and read more about it but then six volt is still higher than the five volt that we want okay so what i usually do is to also allow some room for you know uh, some allowance okay just in case this voltage goes beyond so instead i'm going to split the voltage such that we have four volts here is that okay so to have four volts here it means that um whatever resistor i have should be uh a third of whatever will be here i don't know if i've said that right okay so for instance the formula for doing that is uh, i don't the formula for doing that is this resistor the resistance of this divided by the total resistance times this 12 volts okay 
so if we want a ratio of one is to three that will give us four votes right so one is to three that means that if i use 10k here i could probably use 2k here right so that i'll have 10k divided by the total which will be 3k right that gives us a third so that a third times 12 will give us 12 uh, will give us four votes right so that's exactly what we will do but before i do that let me check and be sure that i have the 20k resistor yes i have the 20k resistor so we can do that so i'll set the value of this resistor to 20k uh, 20k okay and that's that is good so now the voltage that we will, we will have here when we connect to a vote here or any voltage that we connect here is going to be split into three parts and one part will drop across this point okay so in this case we have 12 votes you are going to get 10k divided by 10 plus 20k which gives us 1 over 3 times the voltage source at the, at the source which gives us four volts. So the maximum that we can read over here is going to be four volts, which is safe for our Arduino to uh, to measure. Okay. So yes, that's one way of one thing we can do with the analog pin. All right. Now another thing that I want us to do is to learn how to control something connected to AC, right? So if I want to control, let's say, an AC light. How do I do that? AC is around about 220 volts, okay? This is not something you want to be putting in your in your circuit just like that, okay? But yeah, there are times where you want to use the Arduino to control AC devices, right? Now, let me, it, it is actually very simple. Uh, we're going to create something similar like we did here, okay? But then we can't use the transistor to switch on an AC device. So we need something like a relay or I think optocoupler or something like that, right? So we're going to, let's borrow this particular part, okay? And then uh, we will use this transistor to switch a relay. Now the relay can actually uh, handle the AC without any problem, okay? So we are going to get a relay and I'll use one from my library. Okay, you can actually get one from uh, Kika directly, but I have already uh, created one that is convenient to use. So yeah, I'll bring this relay in here. Okay, so this is a relay. You can control it you can switch it on using a dc voltage now this is typically the one i brought with me is a 12 volt relay okay so that means we get to switch it on using 12 volt we get to switch on uh the ac and the ac is going to be uh 220 volts okay we get to switch it using the arduino so let's change this to relay before we forget and again we'll keep this we'll keep this transistor but the relay is an inductive device and uh, when you are dealing with inductive devices you usually have to provide something we call the flyback diode uh, come on, don't waste my time okay so i'm going to push a diode remember an led is an example of a diode and uh, i brought 4001 okay, that's what i brought so you see that really when the relay energizes okay it builds a magnetic field when you turn it off then as the magnetic field breaks down it has to be the energy in it has to be dissipated is that okay so we use this um, diode to do that job okay else sometimes depending on the frequency at which you are doing your switching it may arc, okay the, the relay may latch and will not be closing okay so it is always a good idea to put a diode in the reverse direction whenever you use a relay okay in my uh fundamentals in electronics tutorial series i will talk on this detail i will go detailed on this test but right now time is not on our side so let's just go ahead route it out and um 
we want the relay i brought is a 12 volt relay that means we have to energize its coil using 12 volt let's also let us give this a very nice name uh, just that this one is a 12 volt 12 volt dc okay uh, let's clean things up a bit with this yeah all right now let's wear it up so what the circuit you've done right now is the control we haven't actually done anything for the power the energy switch okay so this circuitry that we've done here will make it possible to control the relay using the arduino uh, okay so the arduino turns on the transistor the transistor turns on the relay and the relay switches our light bulb okay so let's connect our light bulb to do that we have to input we have to get a place to input our ac power right so we're going to use a terminal block for that there is a connector called screw terminal block i think i should have well yeah a terminal block. i have one here but you can use what comes with a key card okay so first of all we need our power input uh okay so the relay has five pins two of which are used to energize its coils and uh, the three are used for the switching now uh you can see that by default this three uh, pin three which we call the common is connected to pin four is that okay so we call this normally closed nc and this pin five is called normally open so when the relay switches this uh the switch moves from pin four to pin five is that okay so that means that we can bring our energy let's call this ac port let's call this ac port so that will be our ac input point and let me rotate it somewhere like that okay let me rotate it uh, yeah rotate it like this i'll duplicate it and then let's call this uh, ac out okay that's where we connect our light bulb so we don't intend to use pin 4 yes we don't intend to use it and uh, we actually have to link the neutral lines of our ac together okay so uh, let's put a label on this call it neutral Okay, so AC, we have life and neutral. Let's just go neutral. Okay. So this will be our neutral line. So that means we'll be switching on the live, right? So to switch on the live, that means we pick it from here to the common. Then when it switches, it will link from pin 5 to our light source over here. Uh, let me clean this up a bit move this up and delete 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 and uh, yeah just make it nice okay all right so it, it's, it's a simple thing it's a simple thing our neutral line is here duplicate this becomes our life okay so let's change it to live wire okay so neutral we don't switch on the neutral so that one is connected directly so our life enters through the common then when it switches okay when it switches it will it will connect to the pin 5 then pin 5 will now connect to our output and whatever we've connected to our output turns on so this is how to control an ac device using Arduino transistor and a relay. Okay, so let me uh, clean up our cool our uh, system a bit. Uh, where can I put it? In fact, let's move this guy since it is on the Arduino. Let's let's bring it somewhere closer. Okay, we will find time to clean them up a little uh, more. All right, I think I have to move this guy back and then. Can get more space to do that. Okay, so uh, I like arranging circuits this way. 
And like I said, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. I'll try my best to respond to it. Okay, so yeah, we have a place for now we can learn how to program this to turn on a light, an AC light, for instance, using time, using a uh, mobile phone and all that. So uh, AC controlling, AC controller, yeah, AC, let's call it AC device controller. Okay, uh, yes, AC device controller, but we have to now link this to a pin on Arduino. Let's let's link this to pin 13, probably. Yes, let's use it on pin 13. So, yeah, okay, so we connected it to pin 13. That is good. Yeah. Now, another thing that I want us to use or learn how to program is a, a, something, a, a device called an RTC, real-time clock, right? Now, with the real-time clock, we get to do things using date and time in our application. So you can say that, okay, something should happen on Saturday, 12 o'clock or something should happen today at 9 p.m. Okay, a real-time clock would help us to do that. And yeah, let me let me just probably show you some uh, images of these things that I'm talking about so that uh, for the sake of those who don't know what they are. Okay, so this year, okay, as you can see, it even has... Um, it, it even has a, a, a watch battery on it. Okay, so this is a real-time clock module. Is that okay? If I interface this with Arduino, I can add clock and date, uh, time and date functions to the Arduino. So that's what we'll be using. And uh, this is a relay. Those of you who haven't seen a relay before, this is a relay. Okay, so this is what we'll be switching using the... Uh, transistor so let me see if I have show you a transistor Steven yeah uh, the package we bought from Peskin uh, gets me the transistor the one that had the transistor what well, I have here are the LEDs so quickly give me the transistor okay and uh, this is the Arduino board okay so if you haven't seen an Arduino board which I don't think is the case for most of you okay this is the arduino board with the microcontroller which we'll be using to control our traffic light okay so quickly let us interface the rtc okay oh and the ports the terminal blocks that we are using these are the terminal blocks okay they are just ordinary uh sorry let me focus okay Hmm. Right, the, the camera is finding it difficult to focus it, but it's just a connector, okay? It's just, it's just a connector. So we can connect wires to it, and then uh, it's finding it difficult to, okay, maybe a little back, but yeah. Well, it's, it's blurred, but yeah, you, you you will see it more when the board is... So this is just the terminal block, okay? When you push in the wires through this point, and then you use your screwdriver to tighten it through that hole. The camera is finding it difficult to focus, okay? And um, this is a diode. This here is a diode. See, I mean, uh, if I mention something and I am unable to focus it, you can check online, right? That this is a diode. I think this is good. And uh, this is a transistor. Okay, this is a transistor that we'll be using. Like I said, a transistor is a three-terminal device collector base 
uh, let me take come up full course. Yep, so, so you get an idea. Okay, so you can see that it has three pins. Yeah, three pins, right? Right, so that's the transistor for you. Okay, but the way, by the way, there are many other things that look like this. Okay, so you, you don't take anything that looks like this as a transistor. Okay, so always check the data sheet. Okay, uh, one more thing. I also mentioned of push uh, buttons, okay, push buttons that, for instance, the reset thing, right? So this is a push button, okay? We have a smaller one like this. We have a smaller one like this. Uh, probably, let me, let me set this on auto focus. Yeah, just a moment. Yeah, set the camera on auto focus. Good, I think that's better. Okay, so there's a push button. Okay, so when I press it like that, then it connects. This is a 6 mm push button. Okay, then this here, I think this is a is a 12 mm. As a 12 mm push button. Uh, yes, so they do the same thing. I said that this one is bigger than the other one okay yeah that they basically do the same thing and let me show the yeah so this is the terminal block okay so you push your button uh, the wires through here and you use the screwdriver to tighten it here and uh, you good uh, what else yes and let me just show you this so that you would be integrating a GSM module, okay? This is the GSM module that we'll be using, okay? So you can see that there is a SIM card beneath it, okay? This will help us. Once we attach this to the Arduino, we can do use text messages to communicate with Arduino. You can even use phone calls to communicate with Arduino, okay? So it's the GSM module. We will be using it on the board, okay, so that we can learn how to uh control the Arduino board or program a GSM module. It's very it's a, it's a very simple thing. And this board is uh SIM 800 l Okay, so if you want to if you want to use it, it's called SIM 800 l Okay, so we'll be interfacing this one too with our Arduino. And yeah, so and this is also another type of relay. Okay, this is a very heavy duty relay. This relay can actually switch on uh 30 amps okay up to 30 amps of current the first one that i showed this one can switch up to 10 amps okay then i have another one this small boy here okay this one can switch only three amps okay so the relay that you buy should depend on the uh, amount of current that you want it to be or to be switching is that okay so uh quickly Let's go back to our schematic. Yeah, so we, we are done with the relay. So let's integrate our, uh, what do you call it, uh, RTC. Fortunately, I have already designed an RTC library. So I'll use it, so DS3132, uh, no, DS3231, sorry, DS, 32, 31. Yeah, so you can see that I already have a design here. So just use it. Okay, so I think for this guy, it's simple. Now, yesterday I mentioned something called I2C, and I promised to talk about it. So let's do, let's do, talk about it quickly. The Arduino is capable of, I think, uh, three main types of communication. Okay. Uh, you see, this here, this RTC here is an ice, it's a board with an IC on it. It does its work. So if you connect it with an Arduino, they should find a means of communicating with each other. That is, the Arduino should get should be able to get data, which in this case would be clock and time and date from this uh, board. Is that okay? Now, the way they do it is through communication. They have to communicate. And uh, Arduino is capable of three types of communications. We have what we call the I2C or inter, 
uh, inter integrated chip communication or two wire communication. There is also SPI communication and UART. Okay, uh, we will probably talk about the UART, but I don't think I would be touching on the SPI. But again, in the video, I think in my online video, I talk about it, so you can check it out. So to, to use the I2C, we need two lines, right? Yesterday, when I was talking about the analog pins, I said that some pins have dedicated functions. And for the analog pins, we have the A4 and A5, 7 as the I2C lines, okay? If you want, you want to communicate using the I2C communication protocol, these are the lines that are the pins that you use, okay? So this is the serial data and serial clock. So what we're going to do right now is uh, put labels on them like that so that we can connect the RTC to them. So I'll duplicate this, rotate, and then attach it. Okay, so come on. So this will be SDA. So it's not Seventh Day Adventist. Okay. And this is uh, SCL serial clock line so in the itc protocol we need just two wires for the communication but of course uh, there should be ground the grounds of the two uh, devices have to be connected together okay the grounds have to be connected together okay so let's duplicate this and move it here so you can see that we have scl SD over here is that okay so we can just put this guy here like that we take this and put it here okay then as usual you go ahead and connect them okay and uh, we need to give it five volts and a ground so let's connect that signal let's start with the ground connect the ground and then we connect the five volts <laughs> okay so we have our five volts let's and connect it over here yeah simple as that and that's all we need to do for our rtc okay so we can just go ahead and then um, sorry put this on these guys okay now physically when, when when i designed the board i made it look like uh it is on the physical board okay so uh maybe when depending on who's why am i operating on this grid 10 years wow okay Please, when you are doing schematic, always try to be work, make sure your grade is on 50 mils, okay? And I know now a lot could go wrong. Also, before you start schematic, you, can, you see that it's not snapping anymore, right? Yeah, I can't deal with this wahala. So let me just go back and set it back to the 10 mils. Uh, always, before you start these things, make sure you are operating on 50 mils okay that's the standard for key card okay so yeah I've, I've connected it back to certain actually 10 mil it was something smaller well i should have really checked this okay so currently should have really checked this before starting but well let's let's just continue okay so i'm not going to use these pins that's why i'm putting the no connection flag on them okay let's clean this up so by doing this now we can do date and time functions with our arduino okay? and we'll be learning how to program that so let's put this here okay and then label this block this is and so you see that we are gradually building a complex system right but then we started uh, it's, uh, with something very basic 
case so that's how electronics is you put one block on top of another on top of another then by the time you realize you have built a very complex system okay so yes now we can do clocking and date functions with our Arduino okay the next thing I said we would do is the GSM module again I have already designed a library for the GSM module so let's bring it up I'm going to, I'm not going to talk about it but uh, because that's not the purpose of this work so GSM okay so sim 800L where are you I think I labeled it as sim 800L yeah that is definitely uh, yep sim 800 module okay so this guy so it's now going to give us the ability to do text messaging and even mobile phone calls okay using arduino that's what it does uh but we're not going to use much of its work its uh, abilities okay you're not going to use much of its abilities it's just going to do something later so we won't need the speaker functions so i'm going to uh, i'll take them out we don't need the speaker and the microphone functions now data ready i don't think i'll need it ring indicator yes uh, let's see we'll probably need it or use it we, we can decide not to use it okay all right but then one challenge is that this board uses 4.2 in fact it uses a range of voltages and i think ideally the recommended is 4 4.0 to 4.4 maximum right but uh, you realize that we don't have this voltage source here we have five volt and if we try to connect this directly to five volts that is going to break our system down is that okay all right so there is something we can do actually uh whenever we use a diode like the 1n400 uh, as we have used on this particular relay here okay when when we, we use this this diode has a forward because it's a pn junction it has a forward voltage drop of about 0 0.6 right about 0 0.6 but then these diodes are usually one amp but this particular GSM module, when it's, there are times where it can spike and then demand about two amps of uh, current. Is that okay? So we can technically connect this diode like this, right? We can, we can do this, uh, reverse bias it, put it here, and then bring in a five volt source from this place and mount it here right and do this so we technically we can do this now when we do this it means that sorry when we do this what will happen is this when this five volts comes in the diode because of it forward voltage conduction which is about 0 0.7 0 0.8 there about is going to drop 0 0.7 out of this and give us what 4.3 which is actually now ideal for our sim is that okay it's now ideal for our sim but this diode can uh, pass just about one one amp and like we said this can spike and demand two amps so technically doing this is not ideal is that okay just one is not ideal so what we can do is we can now uh, just a moment let me attend to something real quick uh, and okay so we can actually confirm this what i'm saying by looking at the data sheets for the diode okay so uh do i have internet here you can go online and then Uh, 
Okay, so we look for one and four zero zero one data sheet. Okay. Yes. So which of them can we have a quick access? Yeah, let's go to on semiconductors. All right, so we want electrical characteristics. Yeah, so this maximum ratings, and uh, we so for for the they 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 are a series of uh, values, right? So the one that we are using, the one M four hundred zero one, okay. The, the maximum voltage can handle these things, right? Uh, what they call the peak repetitive reverse voltages and all that. But um, let's come here. Let's come here. Let's come here. Max, maximum instantaneous forward voltage drop, right? The maximum at one amp. So if the current going through, uh, when the, if the current going through the diode is about one amp, uh, one amp then the maximum voltage drop you can get is typically between 0 0.9, it's typically 0 0.93, and it can actually go to 1.1. Is that okay? Uh, so that means if we drive, use only one of these for our work, and it tries to pull two arms, this diode cannot actually do that, okay? Because uh, the maximum current, it should be, there should be a value for that. Yes, here. Okay, average rectified forward current, okay, that is one hertz and one amp, okay. So, this these diodes are typically one amp diodes. That's the maximum current they can supply. And usually, you don't pull devices to their, their limits, okay. You don't, you don't do that because then they begin to misbehave. So, what we can do is this. Uh, we know that... It can it, it typically has a forward voltage drop of this, right? So if from five volts, if we even drop 0 0.9, we are still within um, uh, four point something, which is okay for our GSM, right? So now instead of just using one, we can put two in parallel, like this. Okay, so we can put two of them in parallel so that they share the current load. Now, I've been working with this particular board. Technically, it never gets, it's always operating around 250 uh, milliamps, uh, milli right? So uh, doing this should actually help fix our problem. Okay, so the diode we are using to do cut off a part of the five volts, so that we end up with something around 4.14, 4.2, 4 4.3, or 4.4 maximum. Okay, so this should actually do get the job done. Is that okay? All right. Now, uh, aside this, let me actually move this a little bit away. This next early, uh, next signal here help us to know uh, whether we. Uh, we can we can link it, it gives us the status of the network okay the, the network reception so usually what i do with this is to is connect it to an led okay i connect this to an led and then as the it changes the led blinks in that order okay so uh, that's what i'm going to do for this i'm just going to hook it up directly to a red uh, or a blue, a blue LED would be too much because I think this thing doesn't produce that much voltage. We can again check it out what voltage it produces to be sure that. Um, so, same 800 L board. All right, so here is it. Uh, what is happening here? So some 800 oh boy, let's see, can we get a data sheet, sorry.
Okay, so these are the pins, right? So you can see that power supply is between 3.4 to 4.4, right? Uh, but you technically you should that you shouldn't go below 3.8, then your system is likely to restart if you don't do that. Uh, okay, so external attach external antenna attachment pin. That's interesting. Oh yeah. But we can actually link it to okay, then I, I'm not going to attach it to uh, yes, 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 yes. I think I was referencing something different. Okay, so we're not going to attach it to anything. Okay, we're not going to attach it to anything. Uh DTR serial data terminal ready, uh pool height enable sleep mode. So we are not going to use this. Interrupt output active low uh, the ring indicator. I think we should no we can actually ignore this okay we can actually ignore this so technically uh we can ignore a lot of them then reset pin pull low for to reset okay i think we would connect the reset pin uh tx yes so yeah Let, let's let's do just that okay so i'm not going to use this guy I'm not going to use it shut it down Okay, so put this here and the rest of them yeah let's let's connect them up the reset pin is good to to connect the reset pin because sometimes you want to trigger a reset on this and it's being programmable is a good thing oh and one thing we should check the logic level for this GSM, okay, something that is very important. Arduino's logic level, as we studied yesterday, it's uh, uh, what do we call it? It's a uh, five volt logic level. Okay, so you have to make sure that this device is also five volt compliant. If not, then we have to do something called voltage level shifting. Okay, so uh, let's. See, continue to side specification. Okay, we don't have that here. Okay, but then we what does this give us? Okay, so we can search for something like same eight hundred L uh, data sheet. Yeah. Let's check this out. All right. So um, we want to know the logic level. Recommended data sheets. Download that. Okay, all right, so I'm looking for the logic level. Uh, usually, you can find it in the pin descriptions. Pin descriptions. Okay. Oh, this is actually giving the, the sim itself. We need sim 800L module. Okay. It's the module that we want. The last time I used this, uh, what did I do? Okay, that, 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 that. What? Oh, so you can see. The max is it's a two point eight volts. Two point eight volts. Are you sure you can't connect this already? Okay, let's see this hookup guide. If uh, oh. 
Okay, so as you can see, uh, it, it can be connected directly. It can be connected directly to the TX and RX of the Arduino. I think uh, that means on the board they should be doing some conversion. Well, they, it doesn't seem like it. We really need to make sure that is the case. Okay, we really, really need to make sure that is the case, else we can end up destroying it. Uh, okay, but uh, what I have is quite different from this. So, uh, hmm. And I think yes, you can. Is that the last time I used it? I used it with um, an ESP32, so that's why I don't have it up yet. Okay, these people too are not giving any data on that. Hmm. Module logic level. Oh, okay, so let's check this out. Okay, so yes, it's a 3v3 logic level. Uh, you can see that they are doing some voltage division on the RX line. This is one two three four right uh one two three four same eight hundred l module my logic level again uh, i want an image to check something that's pin number four an image with a label yeah Okay, so you can see on uh, pin number four is RXZ, right? And uh, over here, if we check one, two, three, four, this green line, you can see that they have uh, this resistor set, resistors on it. What they are doing with this resistor is to create a voltage divider. Why? This is because this RX line is actually the input for the uh, the, it's, it's like an input data is coming from Arduino to the GSM module and the data coming in is 5 volts okay but this G GSM module is supposed to be 3.3 .3 volt tolerance that means if we connect it directly we can destroy it okay so the the voltage goes through this resistor set and it gets uh, reduced to 3.3 .3 volts we'll be doing that However, for the blue line, the blue line is data coming from um, a signal coming from the module to the Arduino, which is 3.3. .3. Is that okay? Because the Arduino can actually intercept that. We don't have to do any voltage division on it. Is that okay? So, yeah, it was good. We checked out this particular thing. So, let's go back to our circuit and uh, implement that. So, like I said, we need the JSM resets. So I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep the GSM reset over here. Call it GSM RST. Okay, GSM RST. Uh, let me clean up this a bit. Move this guy. Yeah. Yeah. And that. Yeah. Okay, so no. Okay, so GSM RST. Okay, and uh, we can actually hook the out the TX directly without anything. And uh, yes, let's also hook up the. Ground line. Okay, clean it up a bit. Okay, now for this, for the RST, uh, I, sorry, RXD, we said that that's data coming from the Arduino and that data is going to be, uh, what do we call it? It's going to be 5 volts, right? So we need to step it down to 3.3 volts. So how do we do that? We can do that using a voltage divider. 
okay like like we we, that we did here you can let's copy this so you can use a voting divider uh for that i think personally i prefer using a diode and then i prefer using a diode and uh, what do you call it a diode to, to 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 do that thing we can actually use that so using using a diode for logic level shifting okay. can use a diode and a resistor to implement that personally that's what i prefer but i mean we don't have much time so let's just stick to okay so what do we want to do we want to reduce the voltage coming in from the Arduino from five volts. We want to reduce it from five volts to 3.3 volts, right? So that we can conveniently connect that to our RX, right? So that means that our source would have to be coming from the Arduino and then it gets collected. We get 3.3 volts at this point. Okay, so let's label this GSM, GSM RX, okay, GSM RX, and uh, this will be GSM TX, GSM TX, okay, GSM TX, okay. So now, how do we get about 3.3 volts here? Is that okay? uh so we just have to select the right resistor values and um, looking at this this combination will give us four volts uh, no sorry no give us four volts uh we so v out here 3.3 we can actually do the calculation okay we can actually do the calculation i just want to pick something very intuitive and simple now technically any voltage above three should should work for that okay uh so 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 over what which combination can i use to get this quickly let's pull up calculator okay so we want 3.3 volt out of five that means we have our vcc we have our v naught now we need the ratio is that okay so that is going to be all ratio all ratio all ratio uh, okay 3.3 divided by that gives us 0 0.16 what is the fractional equivalence of the 0 0.16 okay if we divide the voltage into 2 we get 2.5 right but then 2 thirds of the voltage it is a 0.6, right? So whatever we want to do, we want three and two. We want two jets of the voltage. That's what we give us a right? So uh, the total voltage is going to be five. Yes. So we want two jets of that. So I think we can use 3.3k here. We can use 3.3k here. Okay, 3.3k, and then use 2k. You can check that out later. And use 2k over here. Let's see whether this this will help. So in general, we will have 3.3 divided by the total of this will give us um, 5.3k, and this times 5. Yes, 3.11. Okay, so yes, we can actually use this combination, but I think that we should go a little bit higher. All right, so uh, I have 2k resistor, I have 2.2k. No, we need something lesser than that. 
And apart from telling my baby that my the next I I have four point seven. So let's see. I I use four point seven uh, divided by the sum. If I use two k here, that's going to be six point seven. Right. And that gives us this times five. That gives us three point five, which again is two mass. Okay. So looking at the resistance that I have. Hmm. Yeah, the resistors that I have. This is what I have. How about uh, 6.8k? 6.8k divided by, uh, if I use 5.1, 5.1 plus 6, so that would be 7.9, uh, 11.9, 11.9. Okay, and times five nah this is really good. so actually we can go ahead and use three three point three versus one two it would have been ideal if this was somewhere around one point eight but uh, one point eight resistor so let's just go ahead and use this so with this we end up with about three volts right here which should be okay okay because we have three point three uh, 3.3 divided by the total, which would be 5.3, which is just this. Now, if we multiply it by 5, that gives us 3.11, which was to be seen as a uh, hat by that signal. Okay, so, yeah, we can just go ahead and use this combination, so this is okay. okay so, in the end, we end up with something around 3 volts over here, which will be good for this particular signal. Okay, so, yeah, that is how we will create a circuit around this guy. Uh, should we use the ring indicator? I don't think I'll need it, so I'm going to uh, null it out. Okay. Yes, so, let's create a green this. Let me put this somewhere here. Okay. So GSM module interface. GSM module interface. And uh, yep, just ask if this is up here. Okay, so yes, we have added, added ability to, I mean, do GSM stuff, okay. Now, another thing that I want us to integrate, uh, uh, I think I brought some potentiometers and buttons, oh, okay, and a buzzer, something to make noise, okay, we are going to integrate a buzzer. Uh, the buzzer that I have, I think it's a five volt buzzer, okay. So let me quickly show you how the buzzer looks like. Okay, so this is a buzzer. Okay, this is a buzzer. Okay. It has two pins, it's a passive device actually. Okay, so it can make sound, you can make sound with it. Now, if you want to integrate a buzzer, Usually you control a buzzer. Yesterday I mentioned that some things are capable of overall switch modulation. So, um, something like a buzzer, if you want to control it, well, you can control it without the course with by just switching it on or off, okay? But then if you want to be able to do certain things with a buzzer, then you will need to put it on a thing that is capable of course with modulation. And uh, usually on that we you know things that have course with modulation, you see the still design on them, right? So let me see if I can show you that. Okay, so if you look closely, see that some things here is the, you can see that they have this small sign, you write pin six and five, pin three. Pin number nine, okay. We have this small sign on them called the field day. 
Okay, the, those fields where those signs are capable of something called force with modulation. So uh, I'm going to connect the hook and the buzzer to one of those. Okay, and, uh, yeah, actually, we can just use the buzzer without it. Mm -hmm. Let's just use the buzzer with, without it. Yeah. So for this operation, I'm not going to hook up the buzzer because I actually need uh, this last three or something else. The positive motivation key. I, there are three more left and I need them for something else. So I'm not going to hook up the buzzer to the post with modulation pin. Okay. So, so let's just hook up the buzzer to a uh, pin 12. Okay. So I'll duplicate this. Let's see here. Just trying to put enough stuff on this so that we can learn a lot with it with the, our development board. All right. This. Okay, now we have to set up the buzzer. Fortunately, once again, I already have a buzzer library. Uh, so, buzzer, and I think he got to have it. Okay, but I prefer using mine because I already set up. Uh, so, this buzzer actually I can hook it up directly to the Arduino. That it will not be very loud. Okay, it will not be very loud. So, do I have extra? Yes. So, I'm going to rather hook it up through a transistor. Okay, uh, so that we can make it louder. So, to do that, I'm going to borrow this, I'm going to duplicate this, push it here. And remember, we've already labeled the buzzer, so I'll duplicate that and uh, in place of duplicate this with this. Okay. All right. So let me do this now. I'll stick in this forward. Okay. So the whole idea is to be able to drive the buzzer loudly. If you connect it directly to the Arduino, yes, it would work, but usually it's not loud. So by doing this, we can drive a lot of current okay, through it and make it louder. So who did this up directly to this is a five volt buzzer? So yes, I can do that. Okay, and because it is five volt, and that's why I can hook it up directly to Arduino. However, the Arduino is unable to supply it with a lot of parents, so it doesn't, it's usually not loud. Okay, let me move this in here, and this there, okay, and then here, I think we good. I can keep it here. Duplicate this, put it here. Get me a one meter. Steven, get me a one meter. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. We have our buzzer hooked up. Okay. Now, uh, yesterday during the lecture, I made a mention. If you just see some of the things that we can do with the, with the PW, um, so I'm going to add the ability to uh, test the uh, learn how to program PW and using our board. Okay, so I actually brought, uh, I have an RGB LED with me. Yesterday I showed it. Okay, uh, here is it. Okay. So it's a normal LED. I said that this one can give you three different colors, red, green, and blue. And using code, you can actually uh, mix these colors to get other colors, right? And if you look at the pins, you realize that the pins are not of the same height. Now, usually, these, these images come in two different flavors. We have something called common anode or common cathode. Now, common anode means that they have the same, they share the same positive terminal. 
common factor means that you should, you should the same negative determinant. So you should always check it before putting it in your circuit. Okay, so uh, to check this, you can check it like any other uh, value. The longest is supposed to be, so if this is let's say common cathode, then the longest pin is going to be the cathode. If it's a, if it is a common anode, then the longest pin is going to be the anode. So, okay. so, so let's check it out. So to check it out, I have a multimeter here, okay, and I put it on the diode chest that are okay, so over there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to put it up, test the pins individually. Okay, so, so right now I'm assuming it's a common cathode. So, so if it is a common cathode, then it means the longest pin has to be the negative, right? So you can see uh, it's difficult to see, but I have actually attached the common of the multimeter to the longest pin, right? So if that is the case, uh, what? So you can see that there's nothing turning on. Uh, let me make sure that everything is right over here. I can hear the sound, so the multimeter is working. Okay, but we don't have anything, right? So then quickly, let me swap the two. Oh, good. Now you can see. You can see that the blue is on. I can check it out. I can see that the blue is on. Uh, this is red. But the, the light is in that piece. So yes, so red. And then the camera is finding it difficult to see. Okay, just a moment. Okay, so that is blue, that is red, that is green, right? So if I had not tested this and assumed that oh, it was a common cathode and I would have had issues connecting it up, okay? So this is rather a common anode, common anode, right? Not a common cathode. So, uh, now, with this information, I have to be mindful how I connect it in the circuit. Okay. All right. So, let's fix one of these in our circuit so that we can use it to learn how to program PWM. Right. So, let's go to the library and find RGB LED. All right, so you can see RGB, this is, this is the normal one. This, is, this particular one is not like what you have there. There are six pins, okay? So it's just like uh, one a container for say, but they are individual, they are independent, okay? Something like that. But what we want to so see this RGB A. So RGB A, which this means that it has a common anode, right? Which is exactly what we're looking for. Common anode. So this is the anode, the positive terminal, P number four. Okay, and it comes in, and the, the cathodes are rather independent. Okay, so this is exactly what we are looking for. So let's grab it. Now, how do we connect this? Well, it is a resistor. So uh, sorry, is this a, it's an LED. So the same way we connect every LED. Right? So I'm going to put it here. Common anode. So we are rather going to supply it with five volts. Supply it with five volts over here. Now I'll advise this: don't put your resistor on this screen. Put your resistors independently on this screen. Okay. Uh, because uh, we want to be able to mix them separately, and for instance, if we want twice light, we may have to turn all of them on. So, if you put your resistor here, that means it will be difficult to get the right value for all of them. So, instead, put your resistors on the, uh, uh, separately on the pin uh, 3 up to 1. Okay? So, like every since we are putting in a 5 volt and uh, we know these LEDs don't work on 5 volt, we have to put resistors on them. So, one here, two there, three there, okay. Then from here, 
we will connect. Alright, so let, let, let's 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 deal with the resistor values first. This is blue. Blue usually drops about three point three three point four volts, right? So I think uh, for now, let's assume we are going to put one k on all of them. That wouldn't be good. But uh, I'm not going to. I'm just doing this. We will we will compute for the actual value uh, later. Okay? Just so that I can finish up faster. Uh, we will compute the actual value. See? So for now, let's just say we are putting one k on all of them. This will be a wrong thing to do because the LEDs don't have the same intensities, and uh, if we don't correct that, you end up not being able to mix the colors very well. Okay, so, like I said, for now, we are just assuming that uh, we will be putting the 1K on them. Okay, so, to wire them up, just as usual, be like this and like that. Please always make sure that when you start your schematic, your grade is on 50, not anything like this. Okay. Uh, 50 50 minutes. Okay. Uh, I started without that, so uh, I can't change now. If I change now, it will go wrong. Okay, so do that, do that, and do that. Okay. So the next thing that I would do to control to make this is that you have to actually put analog voltage. And unfortunately, uh, we don't have analog source on those pins. But the analog pins that we have they are for input only, they are not for output. So the concept, the way we generate analog voltage is in uh, using digital, it's what we call the PWM. We want the way to do that, it's called with modulation. And so we can only use certain specific pins for this. And like I said, these are on the physical board, these are pins with a similar sign. There are only six of them, that would be three, five, six, nine, ten, and four. Okay. But if you look at it, we have already used uh, three, five, and six. So we are now left with nine, ten, and what? And uh, eleven. Okay. So those are the only pins that we can use. At least for now, uh, let's. I really hate the fact that I didn't set the grid before starting. It makes it difficult. Sometimes you may end up with unconnected uh, stuff. Please always check that. Okay, so. This is going to be the red. This is going to be the green. And uh, this is going to be the blue. Okay. All right. So now we copy them, duplicate, and bring them here. Okay. So red is here. And actually, let me confirm to make the to ensure that pin, pin number four is the common. Okay. Uh, well, pin number four is not actually the common for what I have. So you have to be very careful. Pin number one, what I have, pin number, the, the longest distribution will be the annual. It's not pin number four. So probably I may have to change this a bit. So let's let's move to the library RGB. So uh, let me let me okay. So look at the remaining creator. You see this one was RGB, right? So I think the positions of the labeling shows which pin is uh, so I'm going to quickly test it again to find out which of them actually matches the one that I have select that particular library. Okay, so 
move this out, out, and out. Better that is common to have two. So, who is the first one? Oh, okay. So, my first one is red, and then I move to it's arrow. Arrow A G B. Okay, the, 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 the LED I have is R A G B. R A G B. R A G B. Do you have anything like that? R A G B. It is R G B and R G B. We want someone that says R A G B. R A G B. Okay, so here, yeah. Good. R A G B. This is actually what we want. R A G B. Okay, so please, when you are doing this, then be careful. Okay. So R A G B. Yep. Sorry. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so I did the test again to find out which pin. So on, on the LED that I am using, the pin out for the LED I'm using, uh, the, the pin number two is actually the, the anode. Okay, so yeah, that's the correction I just did. So red, green, and then blue. Okay, red, green, and the blue. Uh, I think we can put this guy here. Now, technically, I prefer using the common anode, a uh, common cathode to the common anode. Mm -hmm. uh, programming the common anode is not very intuitive, but we can still program it anyway. All right, move this here. Move that here. Okay, and then let's do the usual. Uh, RGB interface. RGB interface. All right. Okay. I think we're good. Uh, now we are actually out of pins. Oh, good. We have three more pins, uh, which I'm going to use to do something interesting. Uh, okay. So we've connected our buzzer. Yeah, we have three more pins. Yesterday I mentioned that though this analog pins can can be multiplexed okay so aside using them for analog input we can actually also use them for digital operations okay and um, uh, this is exactly something i want to do right now uh, we can actually rule this thing out we don't need it for now we only want this side okay so these three pins i'm going to do something i'm going to attach potentiometers okay Potentiometers are something like they are variable resistors. Okay, variable resistors. We're going to look at how to connect them in circuit. So, uh, okay, okay, let's do this. I'm going to connect two buttons, two buttons, and then one potentiometer. Okay, two buttons, one potentiometer. I can actually do three buttons, three potentiometers. Yeah. So let's let's do that now. To connect a potentiometer, uh, let, let's bring the library. Let's bring the library. So the one I have is called the trim port. Yeah, I think I have one. Yes, I have designed one already. So this trim port it has three pins. Okay. So you are using it as a potentiometer, then our ground and power is connected, and the output is taken from here. Okay. So, technically, we have to do something like this. Uh, 
up to do something like this. And when I chat, in order to set it up as a show me that. Then we will tap this point and feed it into the analog input of uh, the Arduino. Okay, so let's label that. Okay, then. One. Okay, two. And. Okay, so we will do this. Let's follow this. Let's go this port four. Okay, I'm adding these things so that I can use it to teach certain concepts in programming. Okay. Oh sorry, port one, not uh port one, port two, not port four. Okay. So port two, okay, let me align this. Nice. Uh, okay. Good. So uh, the reason I'm, I'm filling this thing up is so that we can learn a lot. Okay, using our watch. Okay. So let's bring this in. But let's start with. Let me, let me just copy everything. No need here. So let's see that this is what. Okay. Technically, this is how you connect the potential meter. However, there is a problem with this. Okay. You see, all the potential of the potential meter does is change the voltage uh, from between these two voltages. Okay. So that means that there will be a point where there will be a short circuit because the resistance will be so small that a very large amount of current will need to flow through this. Okay. So you don't want that. You don't want that to happen. You really don't want that to happen. So, what I'm going to do to solve that problem is this. The potential meter that I brought, uh, 100K, they are labeled P104. P104, so that will be 100 kilo ohm potential meter. Is that okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a 10K resistor on this. Drop a 10K resistor here. Okay. So that even if this is equal to zero ohms, this thing will resistor would ensure that we don't have any uh, short circuiting going on in here. Is that okay? But by doing this, then it means I've created a potential divide. And when I'm programming this, I have to consider the effect of this thing. Is that okay? And I need to put it there. Else, if you tune this potential meter to have zero resistance, then you are going to have short circuits in there, which is something you don't want. Okay, so this is how uh, we are going to set up the potential meter. So let's duplicate this three times, uh, two more times. Um, before that, let me change this name to so long. Let's call this uh, port one. Yeah, port one. So now let's duplicate this. One, two, and three. Okay, so I've introduced this resistor so that it can help us avoid short circuits. Okay, that is the idea. Okay, now change the labels. This goes here. And this also goes here. Okay, and then rename the potential meters. So this port three. Take note, this label is not the same as the signal label. Okay, so port two. All right. Yeah, I think we have exhausted the pins on the Arduino. And yeah, that's fun. So let, let's put this as I here. Uh, yeah, I think I can still put the label on top. And I'm going to do something crazy. Um, I want to do something crazy. I want to also share the same 
for the pins that I'm using for the potentiometers. I want to use them to create. I want to connect buttons to them. Okay. I want to connect buttons to them. So the question is, I've already used up this pin, right? But I also want to connect buttons to this pin. How can I do that? Okay, I want to uh, use that button. And then uh, you will understand why I want to do that okay, when we start uh, using it all. But I just keep this. Ah, there is no fun in that. Let us, let us do that. Let us, so we're going to, we're going to, hmm. yes, yeah, so we're going to use the same things to control buttons for button inputs, okay? Uh, yes, so we can easily do that. We already have buttons here. Now, I've already shown you how to create what we call so, uh, active low configurations for buttons, okay? So let us set up another type of configuration called active high, okay? So this active low, meaning that by default it is high, and then when you press the button, it goes to low. Okay, let's do the other way around, which will be active high. Now, to do active high, what you do is you swap the positions of the resistor and the switch. Okay? You just swap the positions. Like that. And then we go. We have an active high configuration. I'll explain what that means in a moment. Okay, so let's say we tap from this point, okay, to a signal. Okay, we will change this, and let's call this. Um, uh, come on. Let me give this BTN one. Usually, I like it on cups. BTN one. Okay, so how does this work? How? Why do we call this active high? Okay, uh, it is simple. So what is happening behind the scene? Oh, not behind the scene, sorry. You see what I'm, I was talking about? When you don't set this thing right in the beginning, you get issues trying to get the connectors to snap. Okay. So now, how would this work? Okay, so our switch is here. That means that until we press on this switch, energy does not flow and the current does not flow, right? So this point is always connected to ground. Even though there is a resistor here, there is no current flowing. So all this point will end up being ground. And that will be the default state of the button. So when I press on the button now, current moves through the button to this point and this point gets linked to 5 volts, okay, because of this resistor here, we get 5 volt drop in here, and so we sense a signal, a, a, a high signal, okay, so that's how this one works. So, yeah, that's an active high configuration. Now, we need three of this, so, and you will see what we will be doing with this later when we are programming. Okay, so, yeah, and, uh, you see, we want to use these same pins for that, but unfortunately, they will from looking at the way the potentiometer works, we can't just link them directly. So we have to do something smart. We have to do something smart. So we're going to use jumpers for that. Uh, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to bring something called header pins. Header pins or connectors. They actually connectors so on yeah and i want male connectors one by three okay this um i could actually use jumpers but that will require me soldering during uh teaching i don't want to do that so let's just use this okay so look at how i'm going to set it up put one here and let's give it a good name So let's call this uh, JP1. 
a jump to one. J P one, okay, and uh, duplicate it, and another one. Is that okay? So instead of connecting these values, the pins directly to the port and the buttons, we would rather connect them between like that. Now there are actually switches that we could use for this but i don't have some with me so i'm improvising okay all right and then link up so that means that our pins arduino pins will be linked directly to this point instead of to our potentiometers uh, the, sorry our potentiometer yeah and the buttons okay like this so now what we would do duplicate this label put it here uh let's call this p1 and then we we'll duplicate again and call this btn1 button one okay uh let me just okay you do the same thing for this. So this becomes P2 and we duplicate and put it here, call it BTN2. Okay, button two. Uh, same thing over here. This becomes P3 and then this becomes BTN3. Okay. Don't worry, you would understand why I'm doing this. Now, link this. Oh, come on. This snapping is getting annoying. Okay. All right, like that. Do the same thing for this guy. And the same thing for that. Okay. okay let me shift this downwards okay so now this is what i intend doing let me bring them here so this is three so one two and then three okay so right now over here instead of Taking, connecting this directly to the port. Now this will rather connect to P1. This would connect to P2. And this would connect to P3, right? Which are these things. P1, P2, P3, right? Then when we come to this button, we now make this connect to BTN1. This would connect to BTN2 this will connect to bt and three right so do you see what i've done now the buttons and the potentiometers are no more connected directly to the port that to the arduino analog pins right that means that i can now use the jumper to select which of them i want to connect so let's say i want to use P, the potentiometers then now i can connect a jumper between p1 and the ports p2 and the port p3 and the port if I don't, if I rather want to use the buttons, then I'm going to connect the jumper between BTN1 and the port, BTN2 and the port, BTN3 and the port. So I have isolation and it also gives me the chance to use these three pins for different things, right? So these are some of the crazy things you can sometimes do. Uh, looking at what we have now, we have exhausted all our pins and I think, yes, uh, this is enough. So let me just do some housekeeping stuff and then we move okay so this will be let's call this button interface button interface okay okay and remember we have these buttons have been configured as active high that means that when we push them, the Arduino will sense a high signal, okay? 
but the one the way the this the one we did for the interrupt when we push the button the Arduino will rather sends a low signal okay so it's an active low all right let's clean up this side too let's call this function selector function selector and add interface to it okay yeah this is just a funny name okay all right so i think we're good now finally let me just move arduino in here and i think yeah everything it's good now we've used all our pins and i think everything is intact okay now sometimes after doing this you may think that yeah everything is good but sometimes you may have made mistakes somewhere and some things are not connected so it is always a good thing to check something called d i perform electrical rule check but before that you can see that there are still components with question marks on them okay we need to every component needs to be assigned a unique name and uh, that's what we use annotation for so when you are using keycard after designing your schematic the first thing you want to do is to hit on the annotation to annotate them so now i see that all those have been uh, changed to specific values then the next thing you want to do is to check for violations Okay, so you see we have some three errors. Let's turn off this and focus only on the error. This is uh, power input inverted. This one we can ignore. Input power. This one too we can ignore. Uh, power, this we can ignore. This we can ignore. This we can ignore. So actually the errors are not something to worry about, okay? Usually the errors you want to check are unconnected points and all those kind of stuff. So I think we are good. Now let's turn off the error. Uh, we don't have any warnings. I think we are good because these errors are actually errors in the library creation. And uh, we can actually ignore that. Okay, we can actually ignore that. Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, I think we made a very big mistake we never connected the gsm signals for the gsm oh that is so not cool that's so not cool that's so not cool we need to sacrifice something unfortunately we can't touch our uh, you can't touch these guys uh this is also something i intend to keep who this is so not cool Buzzer, yes, we can we can touch buzzer. Uh, really, really no. I don't want us to touch the relay. What can we do? This this are very. We need at least three pins. Now, if we, hmm, if we don't do this, then we can't actually use our GSM. And uh, these pins have to be on an RGB line. So technically we can't do anything about that. So unless we probably duplex this, like we did for the ports, okay? We may have to duplex this too, like we did for the port. So let's do that. But if we also do that, it means that we cannot use the RGB and the, uh, what do you call it? We can't use the RGB and the, other lights at the same time we can't we can't and i don't really want to okay 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 uh if you take the arduino board we have pin three five and six pin three five and six are also uh pwm so technically let us duplex that instead Okay, let us duplex that instead. Uh, it is okay. I mean, it is okay to, but we don't even have to duplex it. We can just, instead of uh, connecting these guys directly, 
uh, where are they? The RGB module, sorry, the RGB LED here. Instead of connecting them alone to their own pins, you can actually use, so pin three, we can connect pin three for the red. Okay, so that means as the traffic light is switching, these pins will also be switching, but I mean, we don't care about that anyways, okay? Don't really care about that. Uh, hmm. Really, do we? Don't we? Don't we? Don't we? Don't we? Okay, you know what? Let's just do this kind of thing for that one too, okay? Let's just do that. Uh, so let me just put it here. Wow, this has almost spanned two hours already. So let's do a wrap up. Okay, so let's do this. And I'm going to multiplex those pins. So I'll move these guys away. I'm going to use them for the GSM. Okay, I'm going to use them for the GSM. So pin three, five, and six are the pins, the, the pins that I need. Three, five, and six. Duplicate it, bring them here. Let's get rid of these guys. And now I can put some duplexing these pins like I did for so that we can use our RGB LED. Okay. So uh, actually, yeah. So this is supposed to be D1, G1, D2. Uh, D1, yes, D1, G1, D1, R, D1, G, wait, D1, R, uh, okay, yes, that is it, that is it, so, meaning that I have to change these labels, uh, D1, R, D1, G, D2, R, D1R, this one will now be called D1, uh, let's just call it D, yeah, D1 red, okay, D1 red, and uh, the other signal is supposed to be D1 green, so instead of D1G, we call it D1 green, okay, and then let, let me move this. D1 green and then uh, D2 red so this will call D2 red okay. yeah just renaming okay so when we come here this this will now connect to D1 red Okay, sometimes we want to check whether your connection is actually right. So D1 red, and this would be D1 green. D1 green. Okay, let's move this guy away. D1 green. And then this becomes D2 red. So now we can jump. We can use the jumper on this D2 red, okay? Fantastic. And then we will now connect this to red. That is to the RGB, okay? Red. Okay, so red, uh, green, and blue. Okay, so that actually solves a problem just that we we cannot program both of them at the same time uh yeah which is actually something i don't intend to do anyway so yeah that is okay for me all right so uh our development board is ready okay that is everything once again uh let's run annotations because we did new stuff. Let's run that. We still have the same piece. Okay, usually this, uh, you check for unconnected piece. All right, 
pin not connected as you can see yes so see that it, it drew our attention to that so pin not connected now we want to use this for the gsm signals so we need rst tx and rx so bring them here and i'm going to connect rx to pin 9 tx to uh, if you look at the board the sm 800 l board uh, rx So the arrangement is, is RSD, RST, RXD, and TXD. So let me try and keep that same arrangement. Okay, so RST, RXD, so that when I'm routing it to be parallel, I don't have to crisscross anything. TX, right. Now let's run the thing again. And instead of 8, we are back to the 5 can see that we don't have any unconnected pins in here okay so everything looks good everything looks good okay so finally uh, let's make sure that everything has a footprint associated with it by running the footprint assignment tool so this Sometimes take some time to load. Okay, so as we wait for the footprint to load, uh, this is all that we want to do for our development board. Okay, that we, we are we are finished with the schematic. So the next thing I'm going to do is to move it to the PCB side develop the actual PCB and I'm also hoping to finish that in two hours. Then once that is done, we will actually go to the lab and I will show you how to etch the PCB. Uh, we will do the soldering and everything. We, we will try as much as possible to record everything so that you guys can reference it later. Okay, so yeah, it's going to be fun. And uh, in the evening, during the evening section, uh, we're going to learn how to program them okay all the units that we have attached to our development board we're going to use learn how to program them and by the time if we happen to be able to do that by the time we are done you would have learned the fundamentals of programming an arduino board and afterwards you should be able to do a lot of things on your own i would also leave this the components behind the board sorry I'll leave the schematic of the board behind if you also want to probably try your hands on it and develop your own board out of it then you can do the same thing okay all right so let's go back to our schematic uh what's with the error that we have here yes please uh j2 footprint not found what would that be g2 j3 j5 j7 j8 okay let's see so usually when i'm assigning footprint i want to bring i want to bring uh, the footprint viewer over here and also display the 3d mod viewer okay so the 3d viewer okay now don't worry about that do you know we shall do something to it we will attach uh, okay so you can see that we don't have a 3d model for that you know which is something we correct very soon okay Vaza. uh whoa why is Vaza not loaded okay Vaza i took from my electronics so there should be a Vaza. yeah so Vaza over there Good. So this is a buzzer I designed myself. Okay, so you can see that there is already uh, a 3D model on it. So this is what I want to use. Yeah, this are all good. This are all good. This are all good. Uh, but yesterday I think we failed to change some LED colors. Uh, I think let me do that quickly. 
that I'm going to use okay it's a surface mount okay it's not a through hole uh, so I need to know what package this is okay so that I can choose the right um, footprint for it so let's check that online so this is labeled as L7 805 C2T okay package oh come on how was I typing okay so L7805 C2T package okay all right so that's exactly what I want so now let's okay so this is CO220D pack are you sure okay let me let me check check from this okay so to 20 d2 uh, d pack okay so uh, let's go to key card and select it and uh, we go to packages we want to smt oh now you can see that yeah we have it okay uh, T O and this is actually T O two six three. So actually, this is what we want. Is is this okay? So yeah, this is this this is what we want. So we select it, and everything is okay. The same module is also connected. Let's see. I I designed a three D model for it. So let me see if it loads. Come on, don't take forever. 
okay so that's the same module so yeah we good over here we have everything assigned oh and yeah these guys i think i should have uh, 3d models for them we'll check that later okay so yes uh once we are done we apply save and then we now ship this back to our pcb editor so to do that you go update pcb and uh what will happen is that it's going to load everything to the pcb editor okay so yes updates and close uh, it's actually doing it on my other screen and it brings everything here okay but let's try you see uh, the kind of thing i have to route all right so let's look at the 3d view of what we've done so far and trust me you're not gonna like it yep i have to sit down and arrange this one after the other okay, to develop the circuit all right so this would be the end of the first section in the next session i'm going to start the pcb and i'm going to record it do it with you okay so thank you guys for watching uh, once again don't forget to share this is a lot of work a lot of work goes into doing this test so just show some love by liking the video sharing among your, your friends and then subscribe okay see you in the next video once again i'm prof and thank you for watching